On today's episode, we're going to discuss four ways colleges screw you over. So the first way colleges screw you over is with textbooks. From my understanding, at most colleges, every university class has to assign a textbook, whether you're going to be using the textbook or not. The way colleges can screw you over is always ordering the new textbook, or the textbook is compiled by the department of which the class you're taking is in. So the biology book, the biology homework book from the university bookstore, it's a complete monopoly. You just have to deal with it and buy the book or you won't pass the class. And that's in some cases. Most of the cases though, you can buy a used textbook and it's fine. So my recommendation is just as soon as the class comes out, check with your professor if there's an online access code that you need so uh, from a new textbook so you can do the homework. If, there's, if that's not there, then by all means, buy a used textbook as long as the ISBN number is the same. So with the online access code, some new textbooks have homework. Well, sometimes your class will assign homework that's online that you get to the website through an access code in the new textbook. So you got to check that out with the professor. And another tip you can do to kind of lower the cost is don't buy the Amazon Prime, uh, the automatic uh, Amazon, the, the default Amazon Prime textbooks. Sometimes you can get books for a little bit cheaper if you go to their other sellers options. And they may take one or two, they may take an extra week for it to arrive, but if you order it like two weeks before the class even starts, you should be good there. So you can save like 10, 20 bucks that way. So that's one way that you can save some money from the first way colleges screw you over. The second way colleges screw you over is we're going to be talking about parking. So this is not going to apply to um, dorm living students, but if you're living off campus, uh, th this can definitely apply to you even if you're living 10 minutes away from campus. Probably the best bet in college to save money is to just not go with a car or arrange a place off campus to park your car or something like that. But some schools have very high commuter populations. And where I went to school, my school was one of these places with a high level of commuter population. So you could pay literally, you had to pay $250 a semester to park. And you would have to pay $250 every semester just to park so $500 for fall and spring and then like a hundred bucks for summer pass. So the parking on campus property can be very expensive. Plus they also have these people that work for the university that kind of, they're there to kind of um, write parking tickets for people who are legally not supposed to park there. And they can be like a hundred dollars. So your best bet is to well, the way to avoid that is, if you can, just don't be driving around on campus. But not every situation is going to be like that, obviously. So, there's a couple of options. One, you can kind of find out the shuttle service at your college and then possibly take the shuttle and park where the shuttle comes at. Now, in theory, you're probably not supposed to do this. But there may be ways around that. Maybe you could walk to the shuttle. You could park in the neighborhood across the street from where the shuttle comes. And what's good about that is the university bus service is generally pretty good. It's always, it's always on point because it runs so many times, at least where I went to school. And as you might be taking a slight risk because if you get a parking ticket or whatever, your car is towed, it's probably going to negate any cost you could have saved. But I find it's pretty unlikely that your car is going to get towed. So you can, and another great thing too is with those shuttle services is that they'll drop you on campus in the middle of campus generally and you know what time you're getting there. When I was driving to school and had to park, I sometimes couldn't find a spot. I'd literally be worried. I might miss my class because I can't get a spot. So it's definitely kind of your parking situation is going to be okay. You don't have to worry about finding a spot. When I went to school, people would literally offer complete stranger would roll down the windows, hey, can I give you a ride to your car? So, so that's the kind of stuff you had to deal with. And a, a shuttle service, you kind of negate, negate that. Another thing too, you could ride a bike to the shuttle service and then ride back to your house, wherever you're living. 
Just the shuttle service will give you more options. Also, in many cases, universities have a variety of places where you can park at. You can buy a day pass. If you're only going to campus two or three times a week, you could maybe just buy a, a day pass, a la carte method, and that will save you some money. So our third way is going to be your living arrangement in, in the dorm situation. So the thing about living in a dorm is, again, you're, you're being subjected to all of their rules. And I lived in a dorm. I didn't really find the situation to be as bad as something like textbooks would be. But in many cases, you're often locked out. I was locked out one time and I had to pay $20. So universities, they, they generally will probably get 20 bucks from each kid locking themselves out of their, their, their dorm room or something like that. It's just unnatural to bring your, your key, uh, your, your card, which is like your life as a student. Every university seems to have one of these cards, your ID card, because it acts as your key to get into your room and a library card, your identification, all that kind of stuff. So it's just something to keep in mind, that card. And if you lose that card, you have to, it costs money to replace it and everything. So, and the other thing too with the universities, you know, I wasn't doing any nefarious things, but you are subject to inspection. Um, with, with guys, they don't generally seem to bring much stuff to a dorm room, but girls, they may generally bring more stuff. So you just got to be careful for that. And they can basically charge you uh, pretty much, you know, for any kind of minor damage or anything. But where I went, it didn't seem to be unfair, really. That didn't seem to be a big way universities make money. It seems definitely with textbooks and parking, seems to be far more lucrative. Dorm rooms are very basic, unless you're trying to do some kind of super destructive thing, you're, you'll probably be okay with it. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is transfer credits. So universities, some universities have deals with states or they're, they're in their laws that if it's like they have dual enrollment programs where if you can get this high of a GPA at community college, you're automatically accepted into the university. The problem is some of these universities don't have to accept the transfer credits. And this is based on my, my experience. And what I'm saying with the transfer, they can take your transfer credits, but they can make you take their version of that class. So if you took Java Programming 1, their university at community college, Java 1 at community college, at university, you have to also t retake Java 1 at their version. So it's one of these things that they may, by law, be forced to take your transfer credit, but they don't have to accredit it that to their degree. They can make you take their version. And I may have kind of said that a little bit confusing, but basically universities may take your GPA, they may take your transfer credits, but they may not award them to your, your degree that you're trying to get. That's the best way to describe it. And I've heard of situations where if you start at community college and go to university, automatically adds an extra year because you gotta take a, retake a bunch of classes. So in many cases, when you start at a university, even though I'm a big proponent of community colleges, just because they're, um, they're easy to get into, the costs are so much lower, the, the stakes aren't as high, these universities can kind of tax you for doing that. Because again, this is, university is one of the things I'm not a big fan of university, just the power dynamic is so skewed to the university. It's, it's, there's, there's really not many other examples I can give, at least in the US, that are, are like that. So again, the transfer credits, it's something definitely you're gonna want to work out. You're gonna wanna speak with multiple advisors to make sure either that everything's gonna transfer or they're gonna accept the community college version. It's just something you definitely got to take care of and manage. So that's it for today, guys. Those are my four ways colleges screw you over. And I'm sure there's plenty of you who felt you got screwed over by college. Just drop your story in the comment section below. All right, thanks. Have a good one. Bye-bye.